Question number 26 says, below shows an incomplete electrical circuit. Pieces of elements are placed in turn between P and T. Which of the following would not cause the light bulb L to light? So we've got this circuit, we've got um, your, your power source there, or rather your, your voltage source there. You've got, you've got a bulb there, and you've got point P and T, which is an open circuit. And you're told to say, pieces of different elements are, are put in between P and T. And based on which element it is, the light bulb goes on. And one of these elements will cause the light bulb not to go on. Now, which one is it? We've got boron, beryllium, lithium, and scandium. Okay, let's look at the periodic table. Okay, so here's our periodic table. Uh, I didn't get one printed out. So here's our periodic table. And we are asked to say, which one? Here's the question. The question says, which of the following elements would not cause the light bulb L to light? L to light with boron, beryllium, lithium, scandium. So you know that uh, metals are conductors of electricity, while non-metals are mostly not conductors of electricity. So when you look at the options that we've been given, we'll find that um, beryllium, lithium, and scandium are metals. Beryllium, lithium, and scandium should be somewhere there, are metals. While boron is the only non-metal that is given on the options that we have. So therefore, our answer should be boron because boron will not conduct electricity as it is not a metal, okay? So we move on to question number 27. It says, how many oxygen atoms are in 1.6 grams of sulfur trioxide? How many oxygen atoms are in 1.6 grams of sulfur trioxide? So we've got our A3, B4.8, 3.6 by 10 to the power 22, and D, 9.6. So when they talk of atoms, an atom is one single oxygen, one just one oxygen. Now, this is a trick question. Most of you will rush the periodic table and try to look for oxygen and try to look for sulfur, but this question is quite straightforward. So the number of atoms that are making up sulfur trioxide are simply one, two, three, four. Since there is one sulfur atom and three oxygen atoms, and that will make up four. But they're asking you about how many oxygen atoms. So there are three oxygen atoms in sulfur tri oxide. It's a simple and straightforward question. Can we move on to question number 28. Acids act like, act like because they all contain. Acids act alike because they all contain. So the identity of an acid lies in the hydrogen ions. So each and every act, um, uh, um, acid that you might think of, or rather let me say an acid is defined by hydrogen ions. So they all have hydrogen ions. Therefore, acids act alike because they all contain hydrogen ions. It's not sulfate. Hydroxide ions are indicating to say this is a base or an alkaline, uh, or rather, let me say base, and cations, and therefore, our answer is hydrogen ions. Okay, move on to question number 29. A solution X formed a white precipitate with silver nitrate, which was insoluble in nitric acid. What could solution X contain? Solution X formed a white precipitate with silver nitrate, which was insoluble in nitric acid. What could solution X contain? So option A, silver chloride, B, sodium chloride, C, barium nitrate, and D, ammonium chloride. So for us to tackle this question, the best way that we can answer this question rather is by identifying what this white um, insoluble nitrate uh, could be or what this white precipitate could be, which is insoluble. So when we talk of insoluble precipitate and you're talking of silver, silver forms an insoluble solution or rather insoluble precipitate, um, white precipitate when it is um, combined with a chloride and so you have silver chloride so when you have silver chloride it is insoluble silver chloride is insoluble so we look at the options that we have we've got silver chloride we've got sodium carbonate we've got barium nitrate and ammonium chloride you can't say silver chloride because then you're going to say nitrate chloride or rather silver silver which 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 will not work but in fact this in itself is insoluble so this this is not an answer sodium carbonate when you mix silver nitrate with sodium carbonate, you have uh, silver carbonate and sodium nitrate, and both are soluble, 
when you mix it with barium nitrate, you're going to have silver nitrate, which is still soluble, and barium nitrate, which is still soluble. And when you look at D, you've got ammonium chloride. When you mix silver nitrate with ammonium chloride, you get silver chloride and ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate is soluble, while silver chloride is insoluble. So our answer there is D, which will give us silver chloride and ammonium nitrate, and silver chloride being the white precipitate. Okay, move on to question number 30. Select slime is added to liquid waste from factories in order to select slime is added to liquid waste from factories in order to a protect the water b protect the aquatic creatures c minimize the hydrogen ions in water and d minimize the hydroxide ions in water so in talk of select lime lime is a base lime is a base and the waste that you mostly get from factories the waste that you mostly get get from factories are uh, acids so a base plus an acid, a base neutralizes an acid and therefore uh, slack lime is added to liquid water or liquid waste from factories in order to uh, neutralize the acid that you have. So which one is is, um, is is in relation to that? We protect the water, we protect aquatic creatures, minimize the hydrogen ions in water, minimize the ox hydroxide ions in water. So acids contain, as we said earlier, acids contain hydrogen ions, and therefore if we are to neutralize the acids, we need to minimize the amount of hydrogen ions in the water. So therefore, our answer is C, which is minimize the hydrogen ions in the water. Move on to question number 31. It says, how many elements are in period 6 of the periodic table? How many elements are in period 6 of the periodic table? Let's get our, our periodic table. Okay, so we've got groups, and then we've got periods. So which one is period 6? Okay, so how many elements are in period 6? All you have to do is count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And actually, we're given the number there. 8, B, 10, C, 18, and D, 32. We've got A, 8, B, 10, C, 18, and D, 32. So our answer is C, which is 18. As we had counted, they are 18. We move on to question number 32. Question 32 says, In which of the following are the halogens correctly arranged as solid, liquid, or gas? So we've got chlorine, iodine, and bromine. Um, so how do you know which one is a liquid, which one is a gas, and the solid? So first what we need to understand is halogens are the only elements. Halogens are the only elements that are able to exist as either solid, or gas, or liquid. So um, how do you know which one is which? Let's look at the periodic table. So here's our periodic table with the halogens there. So as you get down the period, you find that the molecular intermolecular forces, or rather the yeah intermolecular forces between the halogens uh, decreases. So as you come down, you find that or rather increases. Let me say increases. Intermolecular forces uh, between the, the the molecules in the halogens increases. So this one has got the weakest, it's got the second weakest, and so on until you get to the last one which has got the strongest. So if it's, if these ones have the weakest, it means that these ones are capable of being gas, these ones are capable of being liquid, and those ones are capable of being um, solid. So we've got fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and so on. So remembering this, we can now look at the answers that we have, knowing that the intermolecular forces are decreasing as you are going down. So the ones on top have got the the, the weakest, rather increases, I keep on saying decreases. The intermolecular forces increases as you, as you keep on going down. So the ones on top have got the weakest intermolecular forces, and the ones at the bottom have got the strongest. So the ones at the bottom are the ones that are capable of being um, solids, the ones in the middle are capable of being liquids, and the, one, the ones at the top capable of being gas. So we can 
we can we can conclude say these are gas this one can be liquid and this one can be a solid so when you look at the question that we have the answers that we have rather we've got chlorine iodine bromine so chlorine can be a gas bromine is in the middle so it can be a liquid and iodine can be a solid so therefore our answer in this case would be a chlorine gas iodine solid and bromine can be liquid we can move on to question number 33 so question 33 is saying the diagram the diagram below shows the diagram shows the blast furnace used to extract iron from hematite with the blast furnace there when substance x is drained out is drained and solidified it is used mostly for where is our substance x it is there when substance x is drained and solidified it is used mostly for a road building b making electric wires c making car bodies d making water pipes so what is the answer so first we need to identify what our x is so if iron is coming out from there meaning this that we have there is um molten slag now what is slag used for slag is used in the making of um aggregate and in short it's used for making roads so slag is used in the in the in the building of roads so therefore substance x is drained and solidified it is used mostly for road building which is a to move on to question number 34 which of the following is not a physical property of, of metals which of the following is not a physical property of metals a they react with oxygen to form oxides b they have high melting and boiling points c they have they are good conductors of electricity and heat d they have high density a they react with oxygen to form oxides b they have high melting and boiling points c they are good conductors of electricity and heat and d they have high they have high densities so do metals have high densities yes are metals good conductors of heat and electricity yes do metals have high melting and boiling point yes uh, do metals react with oxygen to form oxides no they don't so therefore our answer there on number 34 is a just try to eliminate what you believe or what you what you think uh, metals uh, are able to do and you remain with the answer so we just use the method of elimination to find our answer so the gases com coming from a car's exhaust contain oxides of nitrogen how are these oxides formed the gases coming from a car's exhaust contains uh, contain oxides of nitrogen how are these oxides formed nitrogen reacts with a carbon dioxide b carbon monoxide c oxygen d petrol a carbon dioxide b carbon monoxide c oxygen and d um so um when cars are moving there's combustion that is taking place and this is um uh it it uh let's let's see um how are these oxides formed so these oxides these nitric ox these nitrogen oxides that are formed are formed due to the combustion of the petrol and the nitrogen that is reacting with that so the nitrogen oxides are not formed because of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide or oxygen but are formed due to the petrol that you put in the car and that is why they are trying to come up with these electric cars and so on to reduce on the emission of those oxides which are coming from the petrol so our answer on number 35 is um d which is petrol 36 when hydrogen is passed over black powder which is copper to oxide the black powder turns pink the reaction is shown in the equation below copper two oxide plus hydrogen will give us copper plus water in this reaction hydrogen is a the oxidizing agent b the reducing agent 
C, one of the products. D, being produced. A, the oxidizing agent. B, the reducing agent. C, one of the products. D, being reduced. So in talk of oxidizing agent, oxidizing agent is simply the one that is giving um, oxygen to another, to another, to another, to another party in, in the reaction. The reducing agent is the one that is getting the oxygen from one party in the reaction that you have been given. And products, products are simply what is formed after a reaction has taken place. And, um, yeah, okay. So now let's look at, let's analyze this equation that we have. Copper 2 oxide plus hydrogen will give you copper and water. So copper 2 oxide has got oxygen. Hydrogen is an element on its own. Copper doesn't have oxygen. And water is a mixture of hydrogen and water and, uh, and oxygen. So if I said um, the reducing agent is the one that is getting the oxygen from one element or from one part of, of or from one part of of the of the reaction. So hydrogen is getting the oxygen from the copper to oxide to form water. So therefore it is the reducing agent. The oxidizing agent in this case is a copper to oxide because it is giving hydrogen some of its uh, oxygen okay so the reducing agent is hydrogen and therefore hydrogen is a reducing agent so these and these are almost the same are literally the same so we can move on to question number 37 at the waterworks the screen a gets rid of the large bits of rubbish b chops the larger particles of sand c makes smaller particles stick together and d dissolves and kills any remaining bacteria at the waterworks, the screen A gets rid of the large particles, large bits of rubbish, B chops the larger particles of sand, C makes smaller particles stick together, and D dissolves and kills any remaining bacteria. So when you're dealing with um, the, the purification of water, or yeah, the purification of water, when you talk of the screen, the screen is one of the first uh, stages and in that one you have these large particles being trapped so that they cannot so that they can they can be easily removed from the water so that you can remain with the fine fine particles um of of dirt of of rubbish of 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 bacteria and so on so let's look at our answers again a gets rid of the large bits of rubbish yes the screen gets rid of the large bits so it's it simply filters out the large particles and um you 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 get water with smaller particles of rubbish. So we've got B traps the larger particles of sand. It's not only sand, but it traps everything. So this is there to confuse you so that you start thinking is it B or is it A? Okay, we can move on to question number 39.